Today's lesson is a short beginner's lesson on some simple conjunctions. Conjunctions are the small words that we use to put two clauses together, uh, which could make two sentences. Instead, we're going to make one longer sentence. So, for example, the first one is and. Now, and is like a plus. It's something that we add two things together that have a similar meaning. So, for example, I could say in two sentences, um, my name is Lauren and I am a teacher. However, if I use and, I can make one long sentence and say, my name is Lauren and I am a teacher. So, and would add two parts together. Now, if we're making a long list of things, we don't have to say and after every single one. Instead, if we're writing, we would use a comma before, after each part of the list. And then we would only use and right at the very last one, right before the very last one. And in speaking, we would just pause and use and right at the end. So, for example, uh, in my kitchen, I have got a, a kettle, a microwave, a cooker, a toaster, a fridge, and a sink. So we would not say, I have got a kettle and a toaster and a microwave. It's not necessary. We only put the and before the very last item. And this is the same in writing. So that's and. What about but? But is what we use if we're going to put something positive and something negative. For example, I like tea, but I don't like coffee. Or we can also use it for something that's changed. So uh, something in, in our life or in, that is not true anymore. For example, uh, I lived, if you've moved country, you could say, I lived in Spain, but now I live in England. So I lived in Spain, but now I live in England. When we use but, the positive and the negative can be either side of the but. It doesn't have to be positive first, then negative. So the example I gave before was, I like tea, but I don't like coffee. We could say, I don't like coffee, but I like tea. We could also say, uh, I live in England, but I lived in Spain before. Now I live in England, but I lived in Spain before. So the but is for positive and negative or for something that's changed. And it doesn't matter which way round we put the sentences. What about because? So the third one we're going to look at is because. Now, because is when we give a reason. We say why something uh, has happened or why we do something. For example, I go to the gym twice a week because I want to get fit. Or I don't eat fast food very often. I don't eat fast food very often because it's unhealthy. Because it's unhealthy. Uh, he's learning English. He's learning English because he wants to go to England. He's learning English because he wants to go to England. There's another word that which is very similar to because, which is so. When we use so, we, use, we give the sentence in the other order. When we say because, we give the reason after we say because. We say why after because. When we use so, we give the reason first. Let's look at an example. You could say, we didn't go to the park because it rained. We didn't go to the park because it rained. If we were to use so, we would change the order. We would say, it rained, so we didn't go to the park. It rained, so we didn't go to the park. Or, for example, another example would be, he failed his exam 
because he didn't study. He failed his exam because he didn't study. And if we use so, we would say, he didn't study, so he failed his exam. He didn't study, so he failed his exam. In all of these cases, and, but, and because, when we're first learning to write English, it's best not to use these at the beginning of sentences. You might find them at the beginning of sentences in some books, um, but in general, it's better to think of them as being in the middle of sentences. They join two things together, conjunctions. So, and, but, and because, we would use them in the middle of a sentence. We can use a comma before because, but you wouldn't really start another sentence with it. Instead, if you were writing and you wanted to have a word that you could use at the beginning of a sentence with a similar meaning, for and, you could use also, also. So uh, for the first example, my name is Lauren and I am a teacher. My name is Lauren and I am a teacher. I, full stop, I could then say also, I do some home tutoring. Also, I do some home tutoring. So this is an, another sentence, a new sentence, but because it's still on the same topic, I'm going to use this word also, which is a very similar meaning to and, but we can use it at the beginning of sentences. For but, you would use the word however. So for but, you would use the word however. So for example, I like tea, but I don't like coffee, full stop. We could say, however, sometimes I do drink coffee if I add sugar. So I could say, however, sometimes I do drink coffee if I add sugar. Uh, however has a similar meaning to but, but we can use however at the beginning of a sentence. What about for because and so? Uh, for so, we can say therefore, therefore. Therefore can go at the beginning of a sentence and it has the same meaning as so. For example, if we were looking, we could be looking at a lot of uh, different reasons why somebody did something. Um, he was very busy last month. He just had a new baby. He started a new job. He uh, was learning to drive, he was moving house, he had many things to do last month, he was very busy, full stop. So because it's quite a long sentence, we would put a full stop there. And now we want to show that because of all these things, this person didn't pass the exam. Instead of saying so, if we're starting a new sentence, it would be better to use therefore. Therefore. He didn't pass his exam because he had no time to study. So that's just a short lesson on conjunctions, and, but, because, and so, uh, with a little note about some words that we can use at the beginning of sentences with a similar meaning, also, however, and therefore. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and see you next time on Lauren's English Corner.